Sampling distributions. It's important that you understand this idea of sampling distributions. And the big part of sampling distribution is the ING. Because the way you get a sampling distribution is by sampling and 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 sampling. Let me explain. There are two um, sa sampling distributions that you're introduced to early, and uh, there's a couple more we'll talk about later on, but this is the first one we're going to talk about, are the uh, sampling distribution for proportions and the sampling distribution for means. Let's talk about how we get those things. So imagine, uh, let's talk about uh, proportions first. Suppose that I told you, or we knew that 20% uh, of the people were sexy and they knew it. So let's suppose 20% of the people are sexy and they know it, actually out there in the population. So that would be the parameter. The actual population, 20% 20 20 of the people were sexy and they know it. So I say P equals 0.20, okay? P is the proportion of the population. But if I go out and take a sample of 100 people, do you think exactly 20 people will be sexy and they know it? Do you think that's going to happen? No, because if I take this sample over here, maybe only 18 people are sexy and they know it. If I take another sample, a random sample again, maybe only 20, maybe 17 are. Then I take another sample, maybe 24 are. But most of those samples, close to about 20, will be sexy and they'll know it. So um, that number, 20 over 100, or 22 over 100, or 21 over 100, would be the proportion in my sample. A sample proportion is known as a p-hat. So if you can imagine this, me going out, me showing you, I'll show you a little scale here, and we get uh, about 20, 25, 30, 15, and 10%. I'm going to go out and I'm going to take a random sample of 100 people. So ready? Here's 100 people. Oh, in this sample, this random sample, 18 out of the 100, which is 18%, were sexy and they knew it. So right around 18, I'm going to put a little p hat. And then I take another sample, and I find out in that sample, 22% were sexy and they knew it. So at 22%, I put another p hat. And then I go take another random sample of 100 people. And of those 100 people, 24 were sexy and they knew it. So at 24%. And then the next sample I take, 27% were sexy and they knew it. And the next sample I take, 14% uh, were sexy and they knew it. And I, then, I, then I throw them all back in and I take another random sample of 100 people and I find, you know, about 16%. Then another random sample. And I just take random samples. And I keep getting a bunch of P hats, which are my sample proportions. Okay? As opposed to P, which is the population, the truth. But if I go take a sample, it's not going to be, it's most likely not going to be exactly the same proportion as the, as the population. But uh, notice that I take different samples have different proportions. Why? Because they're different. They're, they're not the same people. So it's another group of 100 people. So just because I take a sample and find 18% of something uh, of the sample is, is, has this quality, I don't say, well, I know for sure that the parameter is 18%. Because we know samples vary. And if you did an experiment in your class and you took like handfuls of beads and calculated the proportion that were green or something like that, notice if you keep if you do that and take many handfuls, you're not gonna have the exact proportion of green all the time. And because it's gonna be a different handful. This thing that goes back and forth, these little p hats, the way they vary, is called sampling variability. It's also known as sampling error, even though you didn't make a mistake. It's just the natural variability between statistics. Statistics are the numbers you calculate from a sample. So all of these p-hats are statistics. But notice, if I keep doing this over and over and take another sample and another sample, what shape do you notice? Most of my p-hats are pretty close to the true p. Most of my p-hats are pretty close to the true p. As a matter of fact, if I keep doing this infinitely, I end up getting something that looks like this. I think, I think, I think you've seen this before. Something that's, well, that's not perfect. Perfect. Yeah, bring it over here. Something that ends up being normal-ish, symmetric, centered at the true p. It's amazing. All of these p hats. If I take a p hat, and another p hat, and another p hat, many of them are really close to the true p. Some are a little bit away, some are both, but most of them are near there. And what ends up, ends up happening is you end up getting a sampling distribution. So this thing right here that I got from sampling and sampling and sampling and sampling and sampling is a sampling distribution. You get it from sampling and sampling over and over again. 
So this distribution, this histogram of all of these p hats is a sampling distribution for proportions. It's a bunch of statistics, a bunch of p hats piled. They're piled, and notice the pile is right around the true p. And what's even cooler about this, it can be derived mathematically, is that the standard deviation from this is actually given to you right on your formula sheet. Two things are given to you on your formula sheet. It says the mean of all the p hats is simply the true p. So the mean of this model is 0.20, which is the true p of the population. And what also is given to you on your formula sheet for the AP test is that the standard deviation of all the p hats is simply the square root of p q over n. So I can find the standard deviation of this thing by using my calculator. P, Q over N. Square root P, Q, divided by, I already know this comes out to 0.04. For this P, 0.2, Q, which is probability of failure, 0.8, these add up to 1, over N, 100. I find out that the standard deviation of my P hats, in this case, is 0.04. So I have a normal model centered at P with a standard deviation of 0.04. P, I go up 0.04, 4%. So notice if I start drawing my lines, I go up another to 28. About 68% of my P hats will be between 16% and 24%. About 95% of my P hats will be between 28% and 12%. So the same thing happens. You have 68% within one standard deviation, which is 4% within 4%. You have 95% of the p hats will be within two standard deviations. Kind of cool. The other sampling distribution is you have to imagine some population um, out there. You suppose that, uh, what are they using for an example? Oh, suppose the average student texts. Uh, suppose we know that the true mean, the number of texts a student sends uh, during one of my class, during an AP class, is about 30, with a standard deviation, a population standard deviation of 10. So if I, if I you know, randomly took um, some students, and I found this, I randomly took 100 students, and I calculated the average that they took during class, if we know the population average is 30 per class, the average student texts 30 times per class, and I grab 100 students, are they gonna? Are those 100 students gonna have an exact average of 30 texts per day? No. Maybe there's a couple super texters in there that text like hundreds of times. They just text the whole class. You know who you are. You like that? You sit at your desk and you do the old lean back and then. Okay, we know who you are, but maybe there's a few of those who brings the average up to you know 35 or something in that group of 100. But you have to imagine what the sampling distribution looks like. It looks like this. I go out and I take. So here we go. 30, and I go out and I take, a, I take a sample and I find that the average in this group is 30.5 30 or something. There's my X bar. The X bar is my sample, sample mean. It's a statistic. So I go out and take a sample, I find about 30, a little over 30. I take another sample, there weren't that many texts, I found, I found like 28, so let's just go up one and down one. And I just keep going up and I keep getting X bars. This, this sample had a ton of texters in it, people that text a lot, I took another sample, there weren't that many texters. But in most of my samples, the average number of texts per class is about 30, and it should be. And what ends up happening here, again, is that most of these X bars are near the true mu. And that pile of X bars, they all pile up around the true mu and they end up being like this, something like that, a whole bunch of X bars, normal-ish, again, as long as the sample size is large enough or you know the underlying population is normal-ish, and we'll talk about that later. But the X bars all land near the true mu, true mu. And we know, given on our formula sheet tells us this, that the mean, of all the X bars is just the true mean of the population. So all the X bars are centered around the true mean. And the standard deviation of all the X bars, the formula is given to you, is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of sample size. So suppose I'm, I'm, my sample is 100, then I can find the standard deviation of all these X bars, the standard deviation of all these X bars, sorry, is the population standard deviation of 10, with a square root 100, which is 10 over 10, which is 1. So 31, 32, 
29, 28, and if I go up like this, I find that if I go up one standard deviation and down one standard deviation, 68% of my X bars, if I took sample and sample, remember I'm taking a sample, calculating an X bar, putting it here. Sample, calculating an X bar, putting it there. This pile of X bars is a sampling distribution. I didn't get it from one sample. I got it from sampling and sampling and sampling. 68% within one standard deviation. 95 are within two of those things, those standard deviations. 99.7 within three, about, approximately normal. So just remember what a sampling distribution. It's not the distribution of a sample, because the distribution of a sample is just a history. You take a sample and make a histogram. It's not the distribution of the population. Those are a bunch of individuals. It's this, taking a sample, calculating a statistic from that sample, and putting it over here in a little list. You can make sampling distributions from any attribute you calculate from a sample. You can make a sample, a sampling distributions of sample standard deviations or sample medians. The same thing. But what you're doing is you're calculating something from a sample, putting it down, taking another, taking a new sample, putting it down, taking a sample, grabbing the next bar, putting it down, taking another sample, grabbing the next bar, or taking a sample, calculating the p hat, writing it down. Cal you take another sample. It's a bunch of p hats. It's a bunch of statistics taken from a bunch of samples. So if you imagine a pile of p hats, that pile is a sampling distribution. It comes from sampling. Or if you can think of a pile of x bars, those x bars are sampling distribution. I could be crazy. I could be, you know what? I'm going to go out and I'm going to make a new sampling distribution. I'm going to make a sampling distribution of sample medians. And I go and take a sample and I calculate the median and I write it down. And I go take another sample and I calculate the median and I write it down. And I have a pile of medians. Well, that would be a sampling distribution for, for sample medians. I got it from sampling. So don't confuse it with the other thing. Just remember, a sampling distribution comes from sampling and sampling and sampling. It's a, it's a distribution of a bunch of statistics. The statistics are generally piled around the parameter, the truth in the population. Good luck.